Welcome and thanks for joining us from the Akamai Government Forum in Washington, D.C. My first guest is Patrick Sullivan, Global Director of Security Strategy, Akamai Technologies. How are you, Patrick? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, this term zero trust pops up all the time. In fact, this conference is themed zero trust. It's a major theme in many security conferences like RSA. Why do you think there's so much focus on this trend? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think zero trust, uh, the momentum there is really uh, a result of sort of the failures of the security architecture that we've been living with for the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, and really, I think, you know, some decisions were made early on that we would determine uh, security based on somebody's topology uh, in the network. So if you're in the, the HQ building, you're trusted. Uh, if you're out on the public Internet, you're untrusted. And really, attackers have done a great job of abusing that trust uh, that's been granted on the uh, on the network. So the typical attacks you see uh, in almost every breach report will be initial uh, in, in, uh, vulnerability detected in an end user or an uh, a server somewhere, and then that attacker will exploit the easy lateral movement across that trusted network to find. Uh, richer targets, uh, more valuable information, and dwell on that uh, network uh, typically for around six months. Uh, and zero trust really removes those assumptions. It, it removes uh, any level of trust at the network layer. So all users are, are treated the same regardless of where they are. In the corporate office, at a Starbucks, makes no difference. Um, and we think that that uh, really limits the ability of an attacker to move laterally uh, as we see them do so frequently. I think the concept was first uh, introduced by Forrester, where the Forrester article talked about zero. So it's not a brand name. It's not a. It's like cloud compute. It's a generic term, then, isn't it? It is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Forrester coined that phrase, and it's I think a very catchy phrase. Uh, and I think you know they coined that phrase six or seven years ago. Uh, and I think there has been very very slow adoption on that until probably around 12 months ago, and then sort of all of a sudden everybody's really looking at this, uh, and it's it's really picking up. Uh, I think everybody's kind of coming to the same conclusion that if you kind of continue to do what we've always done as an industry, you'll get uh, the same results you've always uh, sort of achieved. And, and if you look at some of the data breach reports, those results are uh, often somewhat depressing. I have a longer perspective than you on this whole history of technology. <laughs> and what I've seen is failure, 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 and then finally at the end they do the right thing. <laughs> it seems like you get frustrated with everything else. Well, it's got to be zero trust. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think you know the realization there is just buying one more box or uh, applying some machine learning somewhere. It's not going to make a material difference. You need an architectural change, and that's really sort of how we think about zero trust. Uh, a traditional perimeter security would be much like the Middle Ages, right? There's a wall and a moat, <laughs> and uh, that's not very new. So, um, uh, what other drivers besides getting away from this traditional perimeter are there? Yeah, I think that's the perfect analogy, right? If, if you look at sort of that network perimeter model, it was inspired by uh, a castle and moat. Right? And work great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think, if it, you know, that assumption there is that your end users are inside of that castle, your compute's inside that castle, let's build a wall around it, keep the bad guys out, uh, sounded good. So, so not only has that failed from the security perspective because of that lateral movement, but also just from the basic IT perspective, all the assumptions that went into that castle and moat uh, no longer are valid. In many cases, the users have left that, that corporate office. They're remote. They're out with their customers. Uh, they're collaborating. Maybe they're third parties. Uh, in the government case, maybe they're contractors. Uh, the compute resource uh, is less frequently deployed in, within those four walls as well. It's infrastructure as a service. Maybe it's SaaS. Uh, so really, that, I think that's another impetus for change here is not just the security failings of the network perimeter model, but just the, the migration of apps and users outside of the four walls of, of the corporate office. And, and you get users that do the things, and I raised three kids, so I know this phrase, unintended consequences. <laughs> they can right. receive an email, and unbeknownst to them, they could do something that makes them look like a malicious actor. That's exactly right. So, so you know, in some small percentage of cases, you'll have an internal employee or a contractor uh, who is on your network, uh, and they're uh, out uh, deliberately to, to harm the organization. But far more frequently is the case that, that you highlight. They fall victim to phishing or you know, malware, some other type of, of an attack that, that leads uh, to somebody exploiting their machine, and then in turn exploiting the trust that's been given uh, at the network layer to move on to a more valuable target, uh, take your time, dwell on that network, and then slowly exfiltrate data. As organizations look at technology refresh cycles, sometimes in terms of years, what should they keep in mind about considering making decisions that would support zero trust architectures? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that the key thing with zero trust is this is 
uh, an architectural change. So you're not going to change this overnight. It's not, you know, buy one more box or push in, uh, you know, a client down to your uh, endpoints and, and have a sea change there. It, you know, this is something that's going to change over time. So I think some of the things you'd want to keep in mind there, you know, any new applications that, that you're going to publish, any SaaS services, IAS services, uh, publish those maybe in a zero trust model uh, to begin with. If you're looking at remote access, maybe uh, consider alternatives to VPN because a VPN is nothing more than extending that network layer access beyond the four walls of the castle and moat, building a tunnel there uh, that can also be exploited. Uh, so I think those are, are all important considerations. Now, when we talk about zero trust, for decades, people trusted VPNs. That was a security tunnel. When it came out in the late 90s, that was impregnable. That was the answer for everything, and now it's vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. It's the exact same assumption, right? It's, it's the assumption that you can place trust in the network and that if I, uh, you know, extend network level trust to somebody who's outside of my uh, physical office via VPN, uh, that, that they can then be trusted at the network layer. So it's the same problem, and really it's the same solution. It's, it's more efficient to give sort of zero trust access on an app-by-app -app basis to, uh, to end users where you have a strong understanding of their identity. You're able to... Uh, to develop uh, some level of trust in the device uh, itself, so you know what that device is. Uh, and then furthermore, uh, VPNs are, are pretty poor in terms of performance. They're routing traffic, in many cases, back to a corporate office for a VPN concentrator uh, that could be moving in the opposite direction from the compute resource, if that's uh, an infrastructure as a service or SaaS. Uh, so the, the cloud-based zero-trust architectures also bring with them uh, end-user performance benefits. So this isn't a lift and shift. This is more of a gradual transition to zero trust architecture. It really is. Yeah, it's something you'll be doing over quarters, maybe over years. Uh, but the, the good news is it's very easy to start uh, on an app by app or a user by user basis um, to move forward. Great. We're going to pause here for a short break. I'd like to thank my guest, Patrick Sullivan, Global Director of Security Strategy, Akamai Technologies. I'm your moderator, John Gilroy, on the discussion, Zero Trust, Securing the New Perimeter, sponsored by Akamai Technologies on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.